Hey. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Adobe Live. I'm here with Katya. That's me. Hi. Who is she? And I am Logan. Uh, may have seen me once or twice before. Um, but today we are here for her drawing, which is all based around mermaids, I believe. It's mermaid, I think. Exactly. So, so what they tell us. Um, so mermaid, if for those who are not in the know, um, is a monthly challenge where every day you draw a different mermaid on a different topic. I like think? Inktober? Like but Inktober. Mermaided? Yeah. But Mermaided? <laughs> this time we're doing mermaids. And I've gotta be honest, I think mermaids look cold Whoa. and they're beautiful, but so cold. Um, like kind of like seals. They need sweaters, but that would not be comfortable. Co seals? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cold Can't mermaid like blobs. Ever loved seals much what? either. What but, about seal? <laughs> um, uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so today I am going to be drawing something to do with mermaids, and um, I hope you will too, because there's a. Running. There is a prize. I have a prize. Yeah. You want to tell them about the prize? I do. Thank you. Um, so yeah, today's drawing, which you can do alongside with us, is surprise mermaid based. So if you're in Behance and you can see the little challenge tab, there is a list of what exactly this is. But we're basically creating whatever form of mermaid you would like to see brought to life using the Mermaid Brush Kit by Kyle T. Webster who is now part of the wonderful Adobe ecosystem and creating all these wonderful brushes for us. But you can use it in Photoshop or Photoshop Sketch. Today, I think you're using Sketch? Sketch today, guys. Yeah. So there's like a little example there that you can maybe get an idea as to what kind of style the brush has got going for it, which is very textured, colorful, looks very oceanic. But you can choose whatever you want. There's no like color limitation or anything of that sort today. So whatever kind of mermaid you want to see come to life. And then once we figure out, once we've collected all these and we'll kind of review them throughout the show, we'll pick a winner and that winner will get an entire year of the Adobe suite of Creative Cloud. That's a lot of stuff, I know, guys. I think you're just being so creative forever. For, For a, a year. year. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, do you guys, if, if anybody's using iPads, um, Adobe Sketch is my go-to. Um, it's super easy to put stuff straight to Behance. Um, and if you'd like to know how to get those Kyle T. Webster brushes, I can show you real quick. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah. Are they able to see? I believe so. OK, There cool. you go. Nice. So this is my iPad, guys. Um, so if you click on this uh, plus right here, um, this should be where all your brushes are. And it's really easy. Just hit Add, and then you'll import from CC Assets right there. Um, it's like someone thought about this flow. Yeah. Weird. Thanks, UI and UX guys. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess we'll jump right in. And feel free to ask questions in the chat. Um, oh, Hello, everyone. Yeah, I just, there's so the here's whole the chat. chat right it's there. finally up. We had a little bit of a slow start on the chat window. Hey, everybody. But, yeah, they're all saying hi to you. They're here for you. <laughs> And mermaids. Yeah, and mermaids. We're all here for mermaids. Mermaid dogs. Let's be real. Mer dogs. Yeah. Hello, Voodoo. I know you. Okay, I'm not just gonna sit here and read the chat yeah. as much as I'd like to. I'll, I'll parse. That's your I'll job. parse the chat for just you. Just read me the nice ones. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just be nice. Send all your hate to me, and then I will not tell her. Um, <laughs> also, for today, if you're involved in the chat in the Behance. I know some of you are watching on YouTube, but if you go into the Behance chat system and you start getting involved, 30 minutes in, we'll have someone randomly selected from the group and they will win these two wonderful stickers. Ah, stickers. And a pin of the Adobe Illustrator. So then you can just rock this sweet swag on bottles, shirts, backpacks, face. Man, it won't last that's... very long. It's gonna come off with all that sweat because you're drawing so hard. <laughs> but it's just a badge of honor in that yeah, case. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's so rad, guys. You want these stickers. I mean, I do, but I can't take them. Yeah, I wasn't going to tell anybody. But mm -hmm. All right. Um, so uh, my whole shtick is tiny party hat. So we're going to draw some mermaids. Is it as shticky as these stickers? <laughs> Hell no, it's not. <laughs> it is not as shticky as these stickers. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Um, 
So, my best friend and I would have these ridiculous tea parties, and that's a party, and parties have party hats. So I think that's what I'm gonna go with, but if you guys have suggestions along the way, this is gonna be a choose our own adventure. <laughs> <laughs> so, mermaids with party hats. Mermaids party hats, that's yeah. what I'm going off of. Is, is the strap there so that the hat doesn't float oh, yeah, away in I the mean, ocean? There's tides and uh, currents and stuff, so mm -hmm. you've gotta have a little chin strap, especially underwater. <laughs> um, I'm just, just gonna get kicked go. out immediately for not having a party hat. That's no good. You can't show up without a party hat. Um, all right, so let's draw a mermaid. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, you got dad joked. You're not wrong. Not dad yet, but I'm preparing. Yeah? Yeah. Tell us more about that in your life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my, uh, my desire to become a pregnant man is not working out so well. I'm figuring it out. Well, to uh, connect dots from that weird thing that you just said back to mermaids, do you guys know about seahorses? That's possible. Too bad you're not a seahorse, dude. I uh, know, very disappointing. <laughs> However, mermaids are just about as fictional as pregnant man, so, or are they? I mean, it depends on who you talk to. Is it like Loch Ness Monster? Oh, that really depends on who you talk to. <laughs> <laughs> depends on where in the world you're at at any point. Yeah, I mean. How drunk you are. Considering most of the town was probably just very bored. This is a family show. You can't talk I'm about alcohol. Uh, Can we? Uh, um. People from Los Angeles, California. Where else is everyone from? Joining us today. Right now it's 1 p.m. here, but it's probably someone up all night just watching this to get their art on. There's a cool question. Um, yeah. What do I think about using images reference? as references? Yeah, totally. If uh, where do you find that mermaid you reference? <laughs> yeah, where am I supposed to find? No, that's a good question. <laughs> um, yeah, oftentimes, uh, if I'm drawing something I haven't really drawn before, um, I'll definitely go on Google, look at some images. Um, but for today, uh, I think I've got a pretty good mermaid in my brain that I'm going to work off of. Um, Perfect. Is it coming to you in your dreams, this mermaid? No, that'd be kind of creepy. I, mean, I don't know. It depends on how creepy the mermaid is. I mean... <laughs> if it's like Ariel or something, that's very positive thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's stick with positive mermaids. Um, so, this I usually start off with just like rough sketches. You yeah. know? Go into your... As we're going along, the uh, flow of how you typically work. What's some of your background? Currently, oh yeah, who am I? Yeah, like who are you? Where you come from? Why are you here? <laughs> What's your typical day in the life of being your artist self? Look sure. Like? Yeah. So I actually grew up in the in the South Bay, um, and then I went Ooh, to school in LA where I studied art and design um, with like a focus on illustration. Um, so it was kind of cool learning design from a fine art, um, sort of through a fine art platform, I guess. So I took like all me. the oil painting classes, yeah. but also, you know, typography and composition. Um, and then I went to the Bay Area to work with some really cool tech startups doing UI and UX and some marketing stuff. And then... The stuff they don't teach you in art school, <laughs> marketing. Well, yeah. Unless your art school is different. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. But I wanted to jump back into illustration in a big way, so I took the leap and I moved to Portland and decided to work from home full time. And I've been doing that and loving it. How long has that been going on for? Uh, since October. So I, I always freelanced on the side, but um, I've only been doing it really, really 100% of the time since uh, the end of last year. Awesome. But been no, going great? No regrets, yeah. Um, I think we're going to do a ver reverse anti merm, reverse merm. So, Bizarro mermaid. <laughs> Bizarro merm. Um, <laughs> just call it a merm. Mermaid? You have mermaid and they just have merm. I just mean, like the I'm all about efficiency here. Uh, let's give this guy some legs. He's got a fish head. Um, yep, this is what we're gonna do. Oh, you know what I didn't mention to you guys mm -hmm. uh, is that I'm gonna do a quick sketch today and over the next uh, two days after today, I'm going to show you guys how I animate. And I'm going to be doing some good old fashioned 2D animation. So in Sketch, I'm going to be drawing the frames by hand. And then maybe on day two or three, I'll pull it into the desktop version of Photoshop and show you how to make uh, frame animations, which you can then turn into GIFs. 
Or you can combine those different GIFs into a big composite and make a more complex animation. Um, how long have you, how long is the longest animation you've made so far with it? Longest animation? I mean, I am really fond of loops. Um, and oh shoot, oh when hey. you trick people in the movie theater to never leave because they think the movie's <laughs> happening forever. No, um, something I wanted to ask you guys is: is it GIF or GIF? Because mm. I know that's a. How really are they going to do this in the text? I'm very curious how they spell oh, it. Oh yeah, out. because if you're gonna, mm. I mean, I guess you can just write the letter J or G. Hey, somebody else is a 2D animator. Nice, nice. Glenna, Glenna Cole. Reverse mermaids, yeah. Um, yep. I mean, it seems so far GIF. GIF. Why? Wow, what's yours? Or you're so, not gonna reveal it yet. <laughs> I mean, I've already said GIF a couple <sighs> of times, um, but you know what? I I just learned is the guy who invented. Gifts in oh, 1987. No. <laughs> uh, he got a Lifetime Achievement Award for inventing Pronouncing GIFs. Pronouncing G's wrong. <laughs> um, he pronounces a GIF. Why <laughs> don't you spell it like that, buddy? Actually, it stands for G uh, Graphics Interchange right. Format, right? Mm -hmm. And graphics, you don't say graphics. Um, I'm gonna go get some Giffy peanut butter. Yeah, uh, GIF versus Skippy. That's the real debate we should be having here. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm a Skippy person. Okay. If there was a if there was a format called Skippy though, I would absolutely use it. <laughs> oh man! All right, so we're getting cool. Some more uh, people talking about their past art experiences. How many people come from like a <laughs> fine art background and now find themselves in a commercial like life? And how many just kind of started in the commercial life? Because I think we both had fine artish mm -hmm. backgrounds, so. Unless you call it a, a gif. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's freezing. <laughs> Man, I shouldn't have started this uh, so early. War, war, war. <laughs> um, there's a guy online who's trying to just create a totally other pronunciation of. Oh, really? Jife? But I kind of. He's like the Bernie Sanders. <laughs> um, I don't know how well it's going for him, but it's it's a nice uh, unifying idea. It seems like a lot of fun to com or marketing commercial. No. <laughs> Comic right. Sans to Papyrus. Don't mention <laughs> that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'll be great with children's books if you use Comic Sans, because uh, that's just like the only typeface kids know. Uh, I think I I have a thing, I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> just use Gothic. Um, all right, so I did just a really rough sketch here. And what I typically do, because I'm going to animate um, both of these, uh, sort of separately. I'm gonna create a different animations for each of them. I think today I'll work on um, normal merm. You can also ask. Also what? You well, I wanna save, I wanna save, save reverse stuff. merm so that you guys can come back and see what I'm gonna do with them. <laughs> um, fish man boy. Yeah, fish, fish merm. It is now almost 15 minutes in, so we have about 15 more minutes if everyone continues to chat in the system to potentially win these two stickers as well as this pin. Awesome Adobe swag. So just keep chatting, asking questions, getting involved in the chat. Whatever questions you have regarding either I know everything, yeah. so air it out. It can be work related or completely unwork related. <laughs> For starts, what's the kind of device you have on your pen? Oh, this is um, just a uh, what's it called? Silicon? Uh, yeah, yeah, silicon belly. Silic <laughs> silicon, <laughs> just a plasticky, um, rubbery grip. Uh, it just makes it a little bit nicer to hold because the Apple Pencil is nice and sleek, but it's really Slam. like. Slim, hard on your uh, fingers yeah. if you draw for too long. Also, uh, my cat really likes it. He likes to chew on it, which might not be a good advertising. Cats point. do like chewing on everything. No, this is his favorite thing. Okay. Oh, sorry, Marty. I took it away. Mm. Um, mm. My cat's name is Marty, guys. Marty McFly. <laughs> party Marty. Mm. Oh, oh, back to the party. Pa back to the party. Makes sense. I might have named him that <laughs> because it rhymes with party. <laughs> Chicken or the egg. Um, also for. Uh, Saba, I believe. Uh, the question, are we not getting a free year of Adobe Cloud? No, you are if you contribute a illustration or 
painting or whatever you want to call it to the challenge today. So if you're in the Behance channel and you go to the challenge, we are doing a entry. There's a link available there where you can submit a mermaid drawing of your choice. So whatever kind of fantastical mermaid you want to depict and show off to the world, we will then be looking at those throughout the show. And then near the end, we'll end up choosing a winner. So whoever kind of contributes the most clever idea or the thing that you personally choose to be the favorite of yours will then win the year of Adobe Creative Cloud. Yeah, and not to give anybody like um, cheat codes or hints, but I love tiny party hats. Um, Jason Smith, mm -hmm. what a good name that is. Uh, do you usually listen to music while you draw? Yeah, also podcasts. Um, what kind of podcasts and what music? <laughs> oh shoot. Uh, well, Leanne Lahavas is fantastic artist. Borns, Regina Spector. I don't know. Changes um, podcasts. Uh, my favorite murder is a good one. That's if you're good. into true crime. Do you also listen to uh, was it last podcast on the left? Uh, I haven't. Like friends podcast essentially. No, I haven't. It's like it three good? comedian guys who go through like different crazy serial killer and crazy stories, but oh. they're like they all joke around like my favorite murder. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm into that. Um, creative pep talk is one that somebody put me onto. Mm -hmm. That's might be too much pep for me, but it's also really helpful if you're um, trying to forge ahead in your creative career. This guy has been around the block a few times, and um, he's got some good advice. Um, so, yeah, mostly uh, fun podcasts. Mm. Do you have different music or podcasts that you listen to for different types of art? Um. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, nope. Another question. How did you get into illustration? You know, I've always um, loved drawing. Uh, for when I was in high school, <laughs> I thought I wanted to be a concept artist for Pixar just because I loved the, uh, the storytelling that they had going on there. Um, and then I d discovered you can tell stories in a less literal but equally passionate way through like branding and design, but I've kind of come full circle and come back to illustration, but it's always been a passion of mine on the side. I know uh, personally when I did a lot of UX UI work, I would try to incorporate illustration as much as I could to kind yeah. of this liven up illustration the, here. Kind of, yeah. It would <laughs> like add it. a human element to it. Um, so I didn't know if that was also something you kind of experienced or if you sort of pocketed them as two separate. No, so my favorite thing to do is actually event branding because... Uh, parties. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> parties, but also because it's so much more, there's less pressure. Um, when you're branding for a small company, uh, there's so much red tape, like you're making somebody's dreams into reality, it has to, it has to stand up to all these different audience types. Mm -hmm. And that's like a really fun challenge, but it requires a different headspace. Um, whereas for events, you're really just trying to get somebody's attention for this one thing, and then it disappears into the void. Um, so people are often more open to more experimental, creative, uh, nonsensical things. And what kind of work is that, like posters and branding? Yeah, or? posters, branding, merchandise, especially posters. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, and it's like, I know from my experience with posters, the turnaround time's usually a week or something really <laughs> short. So it's like, you have to get the idea out fast and then you don't ever have to think about it again. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah, fast and loose and um, really fun. There's. And also, uh, I mean, just fun things come out of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Also, what did you do after college? Oh, um, I went back to the Bay Area and um, kind of felt out the, the startup scene. And I really like to um, work with small companies because honestly, you get a little bit more power as a designer because you're not just um, sort of in one tiny compartment. You get to... Um, have your hands on everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I worked um, with a company, am I allowed to like name drop? Study.com, it's an online education. Uh, I still do some work for them freelance. Um, so yeah, I was on a team doing UI and UX and marketing. Uh, so I got to wear a lot of hats, which was fun for me. Party hats. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, If sometimes. you just wore a party hat at work. I mean, we had a great time there, yeah. yeah. Um, I wonder if any of them were watching. If I needed to make a, or Sean Riddle asks, it's not a riddle. If I needed to make a Flash movie for a website, what a pro re, what Adobe program should I use? Flash? 
<laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, Flash is like a weirdly dead. Yeah, thing I now. don't have a lot of experience with Flash myself. I typically do frame animation and then export it as a, um, a video file. Mm -hmm. So you can do MP4s or .movs. And they have body um, movement and After Effects if you need to do a lot of like web or app based things. Yeah, maybe but, After Effects would be yeah. the right answer. Sorry, dude. I'm not. I, I lied when I said I didn't know everything. Yeah, I'd say <laughs> a little bit <laughs> for for a lot of web stuff. Uh, After Effects has a lot of really awesome potential. It is overwhelming at first, but there's a lot of really good tutorials on YouTube. So mm -hmm. if you ever have questions of how to do things that are slightly, even navigation-wise, I think there's tutorials to find out where certain tools are, which is super helpful. Yeah, definitely. I mean, once you if you use one of the Adobe programs, the basic interface um, should be easy enough to pick up, but definitely look at some tutorials for all those fancy features. So I think you'll like this. Jason Smith asks, do you chew on anything that belongs to your cat for revenge? <laughs> <laughs> Um, why are you just trying to embarrass me? How did you know that? <laughs> yeah, he's definitely got, no! <laughs> You're like, I'm gonna eat your food before you do. Um, I mean, I get him the good stuff, but I'm not a, a fish person. Unlike mm. these fish persons. <laughs> we're literal fish persons. Oh, we're fish persons. Um, Would everyone, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping the answer is mostly in one direction. <laughs> but does everyone lean more towards the I want a human top side or I want a human bottom side? Like if you had if you to, got to be a become fish person. One? Or did that one fish that you're gonna be drawing soon is like just got super screwed in life? Is there any benefit to having fish head? I think all forms of mermaid are beautiful, but some just, you know, aren't as good at tea parties or at, at drinking tea. <laughs> um, <laughs> they can all wear party hats um, with equal elegance, though. That's that's where I'll um, leave it. How about you? Where what? do you want to be? Uh, definitely a mermaid, but like not like a mermaid man mermaid, probably just like a aerial mermaid, because then I could sing and have fish friends and stuff. Yeah, very close-minded. <laughs> not aerial specifically, but... I mean, it's like you have Ariel, and then you're comparing that to like Aquaman. And Ariel's Did Aquaman cooler. have legs? Yeah, but he, he swam that's weirdly like, good. No, 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 that's that's cheating. He's that's not true. a- That's true. We should make an Aquaman that has mermaid-like fin. So when they're like, oh, we gotta go fight in the city, he just flops on the beach and stays there. That would be a real short series. <laughs> He's already useless. Fight about that, guys, fight, <laughs> fight. <laughs> um, I think so somebody I, asked about my what, design theory. Yeah, what would you say is your design philosophy? Design ph ph philosophy. Yes. Um, I mean, having worked um, on a high traffic website, uh, every tiny little thing matters. Uh, and what I found over and over again is that, um, I guess clarity matters. And it, it took me a while to kind of admit that clarity and communication kind of Sometimes they do trump what you might think of as beauty, aesthetic beauty. Um, yeah, I, I guess my philosophy revolves around the idea of communication. So the, what dis differentiates design from maybe illustration is that it's trying to communicate in a different way and you want that to be as clear as possible, especially when it's interactive. Um, I mean, obviously you want to communicate something with art often, um, mm -hmm. but you, you, you don't have to, um, somebody's not going to go to your illustration and try to buy cat food on Amazon through an illustration. They, they, it's, it's a bunch of different steps and flows, whereas this is just maybe communicating an emotion. Um, so I guess the utility mm -hmm. is often a part of design. Even if you're making a poster, the utility there is, is communicating the uh, event date and time. So that's useful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I know with fine art in art school, we had a lot of students and teachers who kind of pursued fine art saying this is the true art and this is the <laughs> one that actually means something and a lot of the defense around that never really made a whole lot of sense just because like whatever we're doing illustration wise and whatnot is still a personal thing, but also it's being used for client work. So you can kind of multitask the two, but the whole right and wrong thing doesn't seem to exist as much now, much like, I guess, high school's segregation of 
clicks and stuff, and they're like, we're the goth kids, or the, like, hipsters or whatever. It's mm. just now everyone's everyone. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter as much. So yeah. glad to see the art world in the actual art world doesn't have as much of that. What color should I make this mermaid, guys? I was thinking maybe like mm. a, like a pale blue. I really love teal, so I'm thinking that eventually the background will be kind of this teal. Like maybe a little wise. bit more blue. Yeah, but the skin to stand out. I mean, if it's a mermaid with like skin, she'll probably be pretty tan from being in the ocean all day. Which is- Or a, super, super pale <laughs> from being like a really deep sea mermaid. <laughs> oh, gross. Um, I mean, not gross. That could be. They're all beautiful. They're all beautiful as long as they've got party hats. Um, let's go with like, yeah, beach babe, mermaid. Um, <laughs> Just tans and then goes back into the ocean to impress <laughs> all the other mermaids. Oh, I mean, you can get a really bad suntan or sunburn being underwater. Um, and I'm using Kyle T. Webster's uh, non-mermaid brushes, mm. just his normal brushes. And my favorite one is um, the Gouache Blair 30. Uh, it's pretty darn versatile. Um, you can do, uh, it's got kind of a textured edge. Um, and, but you can also uh, decrease the flow and bump it way up to do sort of a texture type thing. Um, That's pretty sweet. Yeah. So Did you discover this through using all of them and kind of just like exploring? Oh or? yeah, it's really fun to just yeah. um, mess around. Uh, yeah, so I'm just hashing in some basic shapes and stuff. Just like we always have to. Yeah. So you do a very light kind of sketch line and then go right on top with color without doing like a refined line or yeah, anything like I that? Mean, Sometimes I will, but uh, in recent months, I've kind of moved towards this more simplified, um, kind of cartoony way of representing figures. So um, I can usually just, you know, jump in. Mm -hmm. And uh, one trick is, oh, let's delete this guy. Um, if you move, oh, there it goes. So if you move this on top um, and change it to multiply, it's one of the oldest tricks in the book. Tricks in the iPad. Tricks in the iPad <laughs> or in Photoshop. Like I remember growing up and doing this when I was first getting to digital art. So then you can just, you know, have your line art on top. Um, and it's nice to hit paint inside so that, because I don't think. That didn't always used to be there too. What? The paint inside thing. Oh, it's my favorite, like yeah. maybe my favorite feature on this. Cause you can just draw the shapes and if you don't like the color, paint inside and just wash over it in a different color. It's awesome. It's pretty good. Do it's any like, of you guys use Sketch? Yeah, how many people use Sketch? How many use uh, Draw? And who just doesn't use an iPad at all? Who's just here to heckle me? Yeah. <laughs> pretty sure Jason. Jason Perry this. said came in late. Is that a mermaid holding a mug made from the back half of a fish? <laughs> and then um, wants to buy that mug. Well, <laughs> uh, wait until you see Reverse Merm's mug. Mug being a play on words, meaning face or cup. Mm -hmm. Mug man. Mug man <laughs> cup head. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, do we awesome. any? We have a. We Get have an a few iPad, yeah, it's a too. great idea. Oh, submissions for like drawing? I want to see them. Yeah. Thank you for everyone who's started to <laughs> submit work to the gallery. Yeah, don't be better than me. I mean. <laughs> we'll do. Um, try, but you're competing with everyone right now. That's so awesome. Um, and for everyone joining us, we are here with Katya, who is drawing some mermaid and other half of fish head mermaid. Not today, but eventually. It's not the, in the sketch right now. Yeah, here's the... Uh, this is leg merm, toe merm, as <laughs> my friend. Leg merm. <laughs> and we're gonna be adding some, uh, oh, uh, some animated elements. So his little flippers might be going a little bit as he tries to drink his teacup. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that'll be probably tomorrow. And then on the third day, we're gonna put everything all together and see what happens. Animation is, I mean, you try to plan for it as much as you can, but it, it can be unpredictable. Yeah, just like After Effects. Just like After Effects, wow. And for all of you joining, you can go right into the Behance chat and find the challenge where you get to draw alongside us with Mermaid 
Mer what mer mer mermaid. 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 It's for mermaid, <laughs> which is a thing I was not aware of, but I don't know how long it's been going on for. You really did your homework, huh? Logan? I know, right? I mean, I'm aware of it here, <laughs> but for the course of time, like years past, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Is it? I think it's kind of a new thing. Right? I like, think Inktober is like the traditional. The first. The, the OG. First. And then there's like Drawvember? Yeah, Drawsember? I'm I not think sure. You can just add draw to any month to give yourself an excuse to. Yeah, if you've got enough followers, start your own thing yeah. on Instagram. I mean, I do like the, the idea of daily challenges as um, being something to keep you drawing. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely something I've neglected on. There's Drawoline, which There's is very clumsy to say. Drawloween? Drawloween. Drawloween. Draw. Halloween. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Halloween. I think that's. I mean, it. I get. Yeah, I'm not. It's <laughs> I mean, it's confusing. probably something that's typed more than it is actually said. Um, yeah. You know, in the so real world. Just like GIF. <laughs> um, um. We are at the 32 minute mark, which means if everyone just starts getting more involved in the chat system, we're gonna have a winner very soon for these two stickers and this pin. Someone's gonna get to win these and stick it on whatever. Wear this pin around, advertise how much you love Illustrator to all your friends who are not as cool, because you get the pin. So yep. get in the chat system, we'll have a winner very soon. It's important for your social hierarchy. I know, right? But then you've also secluded yourself as being an Illustrator fan and not a Photoshop fan, which is not what we're using right now. Ooh, is there a, uh, is there a rivalry there? Uh, I mean, I, I live think in like both. generally people love both, but I'm sure there's someone out there. I mean, I, I use Illustrator a ton for all my design stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like, if, especially if you're doing stuff in Draw, um, you can transport that right on over to... Uh, it's very nifty. Yeah. Let's see. Just getting some colors on here. Maybe your tail will be... All right, we're going to go ahead and play the video the whole chat video, which gets, I haven't even seen it yet, but I'm very excited to see it. Me neither, yeah, play I the know, video. Right? I've heard it just. Awesome, so our winner today is Danny Mullen. Heck yes, Danny Mullen. You get to rock these sweet stickers and pin. Yeah, Use it Dan wisely. Mullen. It's a lot of power. It's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> Wheel them. I'm sorry, wildly. you don't get any. Me? Oh, well, yeah. I'm happy for Danny. Yeah. I just came here to make. It's the sure. meaning of life. Being able to being support to other Danny people. Yeah, being happy for Danny is the meaning of life. Everybody learn a lesson. Someone did also ask earlier the meaning of life. Oh. So maybe we just supplied an answer sort yeah, of accidentally. Yeah. Forty-two. Mm. <laughs> Chew on that one. I mean, any Hitchhikers fans? <laughs> no? I just sound like a yeah, crazy person I, if not. <laughs> I read it all in like a summer. Ooh, okay. When it was like the whole compendium. Nice. That was an experience of... I forgot my towel. <laughs> um, just throw a little bit of texture on here just to see what I like. Um, oh, and uh, let's pull out some... Uh, mm -hmm. Some people are acknowledging it. Mermaid. You got it. You're not the only fan. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> not the only fan. Uh, that would be mean, lonely. Yeah. So uh, I'm looking at Kyle T. Webster's brushes, and Cartoony Scales is one that I really like because it's kind of graphic and clean. So like if we do violent graphic. <laughs> yeah, these are some gory, Whoa. gory scales. No. Um, ooh. Uh, it's just you know a little bit of arc, and the cool thing about these is if you. With, with the pen pressure, they get bigger or smaller, so you can kind of wrap around an object. Um, That's pretty nifty. So nifty, thanks, Kyle. Um, so I don't think I'm quite ready to put on these. These are sort of like a final embellishment, but you know, just sketching this, those in to see if that'll work later. And I think they will. Um, yeah, so what I typically do uh, is um, draw sort of the base illustration and then uh, duplicate it in order to make the, the animated frame. So that's what I'm working on right now. Um, like making each of the layers a next yeah. frame? Yeah, yeah. Animation. So I don't completely redraw the image so many times. Um, 
Because that would drive you crazy. That would drive me crazy. I mean, you can do that if you if you like the effect that it gives. Um, it's definitely more, oop, <laughs> I'm still using the scales. <laughs> Just draw um, a whole picture with only scales. Ooh, that would be a weird texture. Yeesh. I mean, you know, I could be into it. <laughs> um, I enjoy the gouache ones. Uh, and he's got a bunch of They have some ones. really nice textures, the gouache yeah. brushes. There's I mean, also like wet and dry. Mm -hmm. and you can even, I mean, I think the how it is is great, but you can really change it up in here, mm -hmm. make your own. Um, he's a little more saturated. Well, maybe not. Yeah. Um, put in some dark lines that'll be softened up later. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, if there are more questions, just hop in the Behance chat. You can also watch on YouTube, but if you get into the chat system, you can ask questions of Katya. Art-related, life-related, preferences on stuff-related. <laughs> Have you seen uh, any good movie recently? A good movie? Or what genre of movies typically you're like go to also? Oh man, I mean, I've got a real soft spot for animation just because I did that doesn't make any I sense. <laughs> grew up <laughs> loving um, uh, Pixar, especially for their storytelling ability. Um, ooh, I've really been wanting to see Isle of Dogs. If anybody's seen it, don't not. tell me how it is, because I, I want to believe that it's good and go see it. Um, yeah, I love Wes Anderson. Um, I don't really go to the movies. I just kind of stay in my house with my cat and work. <laughs> that's, not, that's not entirely true. Just overwork true. yourself? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's the good life. Yeah. No, I really like what I do, so it's it's really amazing to be able Even to. Even if you're working a lot, if, as long as it's fun, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, be healthy. Take yeah. care of yourself. Um, don't start eating your oil paints. Don't start eating your oil paints or your cat's food. That's something a crazy person does. <laughs> um. Emily Mendoza asks, do you have a favorite artist or style? Style, oh man. Uh, I, <laughs> one favorite artist, come on. Uh, I mean. You can have multiple. Yeah, early inspiration was like Glenn Keane because he did all the concept art for um, like uh, Tarzan and so good. a lot of Disney concept art. Did you art. go to the Disney Museum? No, it's I It's all up been. there. Uh, I need to go. Like right now there's a Glenn Keane no way. thing set up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, when is this over? <laughs> no. I mean, uh, you got two hours after this. Cool. Um, yeah, so Glenn Keane was a big inspiration for like, uh, really dynamic posing and figure s studies. Um, I think my long-term favorite artist has been Chris Riddell. He does these amazing uh, pen and ink illustrations for um, all sorts of children's books and adult books. I think he illustrated a, one of Neil Gaiman's books. Uh, awesome. Odd and the Frost Giants. So like I've got a soft spot for sort of the nostalgic childhood, um, like illustrated books because I think that illustration and story work so, so well together. Um, it's like illustration was originally used for storytelling. Crazy. Whoa. Um, yeah, so. More supporters of the Glad Keen. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, can I say that all my, all my artist friends are my favorite artists? <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> I love you guys. Um, I mean, it also means a whole different thing when you actually know the artist behind the art. Yeah. Which is like that whole situation of if you love an artist and then you find out they're maybe not a person you like. <laughs> it's hard to still like the art, at least in my case. Um, I have a hard time disassociating. Yeah, because it's so personal. I get that. I do. But you're like, wow, this is great. But also, they're really mean to people. <laughs> now I have to look at this art and think of that. <laughs> yeah, my friends are saints. Well, people. there you go. Um, it's good to keep them around then. <laughs> yep, uh, but I've got friends who do all sorts of crazy stuff, um, like that crazy Jason Smith guy who also does animation but mm -hmm. of a different flavor. My friend Amy, who's a wedding photographer, who also like illustrates and brands. So I've got all awesome. these like crazy friends. My friend Julia told me about Mermaid, and she's been doing them way better than me. So did she um, start it? <laughs> I don't think so, but I think <laughs> that she is pro uh, What's the word? Uh, she is, is um, participating, no, that's not the word I want, but it works. Participating in it and, and making it wonderful. Prolific. Um, no, it's like, 
continuing on, pro, prof, profligating? <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna stop saying words that I don't know. Also, um, uh, Paula Jordan Mayo asks, how do you use the fill tool to fill in the space inside your line work quickly? Ooh, um, so I, I personally really like the scribbling. Uh, I just increase the brush size a lot. And then if I really need to, you know, just cut it down with um, this and then add, cause, cause the uh, erase tool kind of has these fuzzy edges, but I like the hard edges. So then I'll just make it small and go back around it. Um, so that doesn't answer your question, but that's how I do it. <laughs> um, but for backgrounds, definitely, you can just click and hold, fills oh, everything mermaid's in. Mermaid's gone. Mermaid's gone. <laughs> We're done. Uh, so, but yeah, I, uh, I, I find- uh, Proliferate. Proliferate? Is that the word you were thinking of? Someone just contributed that as a potential. I think so. I think so. <laughs> also, Jackie Whistler added Tom Bancroft started the mermaid hashtag on Instagram 2016. Oh, so, so it's not So it has not, not that been new. very long. Okay. Nice. Thanks, Tom. Tom what? Oh, what? What's uh, his name? Tom Bancroft. Thanks, Tom Bancroft. He's out there and he hears it. No matter where he is, anytime his name's mentioned. The whole world's not watching this? Come on. <laughs> Tom's watching it on so many monitors right now. Yeah. It's for you, Tom, buddy. Also for, I think, what's the guy who invented the GIF? Uh, his name was Tom or Paul? Will yeah, I don't Height? remember. Mr. Will Height. <laughs> um, man, that was so long ago. I wonder if he's... Yeah, it's been, what, a dozen or so years now? Since what? The whole GIF invention, technically. Like two dozen. Yeah. Right. 87. I'm so out of the computer world. <laughs> what? I'm in and out of it. I'm in it in <laughs> one way and out are? of it in a historic way. Because sure. I lose track of all the times. Mm -hmm. What color should her she, she shells be? She shells. <laughs> it kind of works. <laughs> I mean, she could have something like completely different than seashells. Uh, mm. 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 She, she, she shells just provide so much coverage, though. It's really nice. That's true. That's, That's why shape. nature created them. <laughs> yep. That's why we're also here to teach you about nature and biology and the evolution <laughs> Finding of Finding random items in nature to use as clothing. Yep. Did you know that acorns Are make... bad for this. <laughs> Not good bras. <laughs> I was talking about bras. I was going to say, like... <laughs> Finger hats. <laughs> so your fingers can have a party. Yeah. Oh, how cute. If you're a fairy and your fingers are just feeling left out of. Or use the acorn to uh, sew so you don't stab oh, yourself. Oh, thimbles, yeah. Or thimble acorn. Yep, thimble acorns. It's actually what the f uh, smaller version of Peter Pan used. We also have two more submissions. If you want to see what's up and coming. I do. Can they see this? No. Okay. I mean, they. <laughs> I think they can if they go you to it. You can log it, on. They don't see my screen right now. Nice. Oh, I so see some mermaid brushes eyes. being used. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, I love those character designs. Pretty awesome. Nice. Mermaid hair is just such a fun thing to draw. Wow. <laughs> Has there been a lot of mermaid experience doing short hair? Short hair. I mean, that seems more practical. Right? Like every time. You're not constantly like <laughs> seaweed in your face. Yeah, let's see some of that. <laughs> some seaweed in your like some like Furios some or real the mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> like I want to see some mermaids that are just living their best no makeup lives. <laughs> <laughs> the earthy mermaid. The earthy mermaid. Nathan Elikonch, Conic, Elikonic. Get says, it right. I mean, he's he's going with a pun. This is mermazing work. So hey. <laughs> more dad jokes. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. What are mom jokes, though? Um, like the <laughs> same. I think is the right answer. <laughs> Mom's the new dad. What? Uh, yeah. All right. Um, swim caps. Swim caps. Also, be a good thing for a mermaid. It says Ooh, hi. yeah, like hair nets that go underwater. Totally. Um, yeah. Is Aquaman a merman and an Atlantean? I don't know. I mean, I guess the whole talk of the tail thing definitely changes it where it's 
Not really mermaid-ish. Yeah, what's the, like the classical definition of a mermaid? Well, wasn't it Past sea lions or something that were like on silkies? rocks? Oh, well, <laughs> I mean, where they came from, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, not to ruin it for anybody Wearing who wigs. actually believes in mermaids, they're real, guys, yeah, they'll bring you presents. The amount of delusional they were to be like, those are women on rocks. As they're like, ur, ur, ur. <laughs> um, Listen to their beautiful calls. Uh, yeah, well, uh, a lot of people say that, uh, like, the sirens from mm -hmm. the Odyssey were mermaids, but I'm pretty sure they're bird ladies. And that's what Team is saying. Bird ladies? Yeah, they're bird ladies. They're half bird, half, yeah. half woman. Half lady. But is. <laughs> <laughs> but the Starbucks symbol is a siren, I believe? I thought. I thought it was a mermaid. Well. But then it's like intertwined again. Because the siren's kind of like a manipulative thing when mermaids Yeah, it's like, hey, come hang out Come here. drink this caffeine. <laughs> that would work. And like, um, I was on this road, which is kind of like the ocean, and I got distracted by this mermaid. And I bought more coffee, darn it. Well, that's never a decision that I've regretted, so I'm not mad. Um, <laughs> Except for this one time, I did a road trip down to LA to visit some friends, and I think I had a free drink uh, to redeem, and I asked them how many shots I could put in, and they said a number, and I said, yes, do that. Was it like 10? <laughs> uh, I think it was like six or eight, Jeez. but I just ended up uh, standing in the middle of the living room in my sleeping bag, just long, long, long after everybody else had gone to bed, yeah, just wondering right. what I had done to myself, so I guess that's the one time. You got starbucked. The, I got star sirened, siren, <laughs> siren bucked. Um, yep. But never apart from that. Yeah, caffeine in a drawing does not, it works well up to a point and then overdoing it, <laughs> you start becoming like a jittery mess who questions all your decisions. And then you're drawing like this. <laughs> and you're like, this is great. And then you hit the crashing and you're like, I can't even draw. Yep, yeah. There's a cycle, it's like, you've gotta go through it sometimes. Um. Awesome. Well, if you're joining us, we are here with Katya, and she is continuing to draw mermaids for Mermaid in honor of this 2016... Tom guy. ...support system of the mermaid... It's a cool art thing. ...community, yeah. Basically, anytime we can think of something that's fun to draw and give us an excuse to draw it, why not? Yeah, and it's good to draw every day. Like, I have my own ways of drawing every day. Um, just because what I- What are they? <laughs> well, I started this project a while back where I draw um, pet portraits for people. And, I mean, I'm still kind of doing it. Uh, but, I wonder if any of them are watching. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, I, I started off drawing like free, really small doodles. And then eventually people were like, oh, well, I like these pet portraits, so can I pay you? So then I started making paid options and now I, it's just, I get, they're, they're pretty cheap. I just get little orders and it's like a fun way to, I guess, warm up. And then somebody gets a portrait of their pet. To, That's sweet. Yeah, it's pretty nice. What's been your favorite animal to draw for someone's pet? Ooh, I just drew a goldfish. No, a, a, a betta fish, it was a betta fish. And it was apparently this like really, really special betta fish. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty fun. I've drawn a hedgehog. I drew some uh, ferrets. I drew a donkey once. Awesome. I drew a teacup pig. That was cute. Wait, someone. I like that someone had a donkey yeah. as their pet. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I guess <laughs> if you have a farm, it makes sense, but I was just thinking someone in like an apartment being like, my roommate <laughs> slash pet, this donkey. <laughs> yeah, I like pink hair. And our challenge today is to draw along with us with the mermaid. So if you go into the challenge tab in Behance and there is a mermaid specific brush set that Kyle Webster put together, using those to draw whatever type of mermaid you'd like to. Right now we're doing the, the normal, mermaid. normal mermaid, but tomorrow will be the wacky fish top, fish. human bottom fish. Yep, <laughs> that just sums it up. Whatever it is. I'm putting them together, because they're a party together, because all mermaids can have a party together. Um, I mean, I <laughs> I kind of went on the stint of party-themed animations 
because I think parties are just, they're not just like fun and colorful, uh, especially when you're growing up. They're sort of where all of your most awkward social quirks I dare are say it felt, still is. <laughs> are felt most strongly, but they're all parties are also where it's supposed to be like good vibes only, so you're supposed to suppress all of those as much as you can. And that's why so many of our uh, um, TV shows and movies revolve around parties as, as crucial plot points and um, it's just sort of a fun, colorful backdrop and a mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, compression chamber for all of life's problems. So it's a very general category. Like you can put a party hat on anything. I recently drew a, an asteroid floating through space and put a party hat on it and it changes the whole context. It's true. Um, I mean, the Big Bang was the biggest party <laughs> and now we're serving this perpetual motion. Perpetual party, one might say. Exactly. Um, <laughs> perfect. The universe is a perpetual party. Yep. Um, should I make her hair a little more? Oh no, you're the artist. Well, 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 maybe, yeah, a little more <laughs> saturated. <laughs> uh, here's, I'm gonna merge this down, do the paint inside trick. <laughs> Just make the brush big, paint all over. Yeah, more bubble gum like. So how, uh, how is the, like Portland art life oh. in comparison to you having sort of experienced the San Franciscan art life. Yeah, I mean, I was I didn't like live right in the city, just sort of a hour or so south. Um, yeah, the Bay Area is awesome. It has a lot of really cool opportunities. Um, but yeah, Portland is a very, very different vibe. Um, They've got uh, PSU there. We, we, I didn't go there, but there's mm -hmm. a bunch of like really young, um, well-educated artists who are coming out of there, and they're just doing this amazing work. Um, so for that reason, like it's competitive, and there's a big emphasis on it. And, and what's that art school like? PSU. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, super it's familiar. Just, I don't know. I didn't go there. <laughs> I just have met the people. <laughs> um, but. Uh, I think another big thing is that I heard a statistic like 80% of the employment in Portland is through small business. And that's, that's amazing awesome. considering there's like Nike and Intel and all these big companies there. But still 80% is small business because I uh, you can go to like a different coffee shop every day for like 16 years and never go to the same coffee shop twice. It's amazing. You go back to the same coffee shop and it's a different coffee shop. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, <laughs> unfortunately. But that means there's a lot of opportunity for working with small businesses and branding and a lot of events, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. So, And um, thus it's a perfect situation for all the event kind of things you want to be doing work for. Yep, yep. Awesome. And meeting new people. There's different places like Rizograph Studios that you can go attend and um, uh, that's a type of printing. Um, yeah, there's a lot mm -hmm. to learn. There's a lot of free events. I mean, I'm sure there are here too, but like I said, I haven't lived in the city. Um, yeah, there's like plenty of free events, but it seems a lot more tech focused than like yeah. anything else, uh, which is great for like being in the industry that we are. But if you go up to like Berkeley or Oakland, it even lessens the amount of tech that's kind of going on, so. Yeah, and there's a, a little bit of that represented in Portland, like there's there's definitely startups there. Um, but I think, yeah, the emphasis is really on sort of the arts culture a little bit more rather than the tech culture. Mm -hmm. um, the shoe culture is very strong there. Because really? <laughs> of Nike. I mean, I guess so. <laughs> but do people wear like Adidas in sort of weird rebuttal? To the mm, Nike shoes? I don't think so. I think they might I mean, be it's frightened. Just mostly Nike. <laughs> um, I definitely went to a uh, Converse event once wearing Adidas, and they gave me shoes to put punk? on instead of the oh Adidas. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Do you put them on over your shoes? Do you ask for like wish. a size 12? If I just wore my Adidas shoes as my gloves, and then I wore the around Converse your neck, on my be feet. all cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a boxer. <laughs> oh, no, but brand is strong when it comes to not wanting competition in the area. Yeah. Once you open up that question for like, I don't know, maybe those <laughs> do not like. Are you guys drawing mermaids? I hope so. I hope so too. I haven't seen any more updates in the challenge recently, but we do still have an hour. Yeah, you can squeak in at the last moment. That's often my MO. <laughs> Is that your, 
I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, what's your typical walking or working situation of timeline when it comes to do you procrastinate on stuff and then kind of do it last minute or do you like oh. slowly do it for a long period of time? Um, it sort of depends on the project for me. I really love making lists. Like my whole life mm -hmm. revolves around making a to-do list every single day. So, I mean, I, I'm pretty good at uh, getting stuff done when it needs to get done. But if I really just am not into it, if it's boring, then <laughs> yeah, I'll procrastinate. Um, but I've, I've never had an illustration project that wasn't really fun. Because mm -hmm. this really is where my passion is. Um, yeah, except for when I have to draw people's ugly pets. No, I'm kidding. I've never seen oh. an ugly pet. <laughs> is there is there anything that you really don't like to draw? Ooh, um, I haven't come across anything. I'm sure. No, like bike, car, stuff. motorcycle nightmare. Oh yeah, I guess. Um, I got to draw like a gun or a bike once, and so I guess the, well, what the about stuff. A gun bike. A gun bike? Yeah. Don't 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 hire me for that. Find somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I guess technological things are a little bit of a pain because I really like the fun of kind of textury lines. Um, I mean, you can definitely make stylized, quirky bikes, but mm -hmm. that's not my strong suit. Ooh, hand lettering is something that I also want to get better at. Ooh. I've got a friend named Amy. Portland seems like a perfect place for that, too. Yeah, because there's so many sandwich boards. Like, that's something that um, I never have seen so much of before, but sandwich <laughs> boards, like, you know, those those sort of A-frame. Outside, um, displaying the come in, eat our food. Yeah, and they also often have something funny on them. Um, there's been, like, a huge influx, too, of, like, having the whole wall inside a restaurant be blackboarded. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then they just hire someone to come in and make the menu look real nice. Yeah. Um. Which, I'm all for it. It's almost like graffiti. <laughs> yeah, but you're hired to do it. Yeah, it's the illustration of graffiti. Yeah. So that's any of your old jam. Emily Mendoza asks, Converse or Vans? Uh, Target brand. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I don't really, I know it's like a very, very typical designer thing to have like the coolest shoes, but I don't. I, I wear like, I don't think they even have like brands that you'd day. know. <laughs> Flip flops every day. Well, I mean, I do work from home, so I probably wear shoes a lot less than the average person, <laughs> um, which is kind of nice. Um, when you work from home, like, Putting on your shoes is actually like a big drag. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I only do it when I like go let the UPS guy in or go out. Because otherwise he's going to be embarrassed and run away. Yeah. Like, oh, feet. Ugh. You never know. Feet are kind of weird. I mean, they are. That's why we're drawing but mermaids. If you, if you take care of them, not as weird. Yeah, we're just avoiding <laughs> drawing feet. Oh, wait, no. I lied to you because I'm drawing a mermaid with feet. I'm sorry. Can we, can well, we you cut can, that out? You just... haven't drawn it yet, so you could definitely make no, the I'm feet just legs. Feet. I'm going to draw it with crazy arms. toes. Um, crazy toes would be if their toes looked like toes. hands. You yeah, know, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and a nightmare. Feel free to take that idea, though, guys, if, you, if you're up to it. So having gone from, like, the working in an office kind of experience and then going to just full freelance and working at home, is there a certain level of kind of like mental space you have to provide for yourself or like walks you need to take just because you're in the same room all day? Oh or? yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm a pretty good interior decorator, so like <laughs> I've got a lot of plants, that's healthy and good. But uh, yeah, I definitely go on walks and hang out with people as much as I possibly can because I like those people and I like those walks. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, you have to depend on yourself a little bit more to set your own work-life balance because you know, if you're in an office job, you've got the hours that you're um, sort of supposed to do, but as a freelancer, it's really easy to get sucked into this focus vortex and forget to eat or feed your cat. Um, <laughs> Who has kidding. not forgotten to eat? Um, ever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's it was a learning curve for me to realize, wow, I can do whatever I want, but oh, I should probably not wake up at noon every day because <laughs> it's, it's just you know, it's not healthy for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, for some people, they really like to stay up really late and kind of get a late start. I'm the opposite. I like to, I feel more productive if I do get up at a, like, seven or eight. Um, 
<laughs> which probably isn't early to a lot of people. Uh, that's I mean, early to me. That's no 5 a.m., but like, it's all relatively. Oh, I got up at 5 a.m. to uh, fly here, and I was just, and, and I went kayaking here. with my family, and I just, my mind was uh, <laughs> 5 a.m. Just look over, and you're like, sleeping in the kayak. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness it was a double, um, so I didn't have to do any Pick work. up the slack. Yeah. Kelly Ware asks, how do you recommend I learn Illustrator, Photoshop, etc.?" cetera? Yeah, um, uh, when I was first doing it, I learned just by kind of messing around. Uh, but since I started, there's just been this overabundance of um, like videos and tutorials. Uh, so if there's like one specific thing you get stuck on, plug it into YouTube or Google and I'm I bet you can find it. It's the magical learning tool. Yeah, um, but it's really good to just you know play around. But if you're on a deadline, watch some videos. Um, yeah, and and there's art challenges too. So uh, there's some places that'll say, uh, well, let's draw a mermaid every day. <laughs> and some some uh, programs will give you a little more guidance, like using the X Y Z tool. Um, it's almost like giving yourself a homework assignment from school to try something new too, which yeah. is kind of nice. Yeah, so um, kind of deciding what your end goal is. Like I want to be really good at, um, like for me it was frame animation. So I took that goal and I reverse engineered some projects for myself to get me there. So then I, I just started um, kind of giving myself tasks and then uh, trying to set them harder and harder so that there would be stuff that I didn't know because that's where you learn is when you run into the problems that um, you can't take a shortcut on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, Sean Riddle asks, what website do you use for freelance work? Ooh, uh, <laughs> this is something I feel very strongly about. I tried um, Upwork, and I know there's other sites like that, like Fiverr and, I don't know, other there's ones. There's so many now. And I really don't like them because I was spending so much time sort of pitching myself, and those sites are really just the lowest bid wins. Um, so I could have been a better designer than the other person, but they had a lower price. And Upwork is really where people who don't want to really hire designers go. At least that's, that's been my experience. Mm -hmm. So I would say stay away from those um, sites where you go to pitch. Um, and uh, I actually haven't used any sites in the last couple of months because people have just been coming to me, they've been finding me on Instagram, on Behance is, is a big one, actually. Because I mean, at this point, Instagram's kind of like a portfolio site it in really its own is. right, because people will just easily hop up on their phone, mm -hmm. scroll through it, realize whether or not you're actually the kind of direction they want to go with. Yeah, and you can jump right into their daily lives because they'll get either notifications or you just show up on their feed and everybody's on Instagram all the time. So, um, all the time. yeah, uh, so yeah, I, I guess my answer is I don't really use any sites apart from Behance and uh, Instagram, but those aren't really like job searching sites. Though on Behance you can put your um, notification or your like link to how to hire you. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn is another one that I've used. You can use InMail to, like if, if there's a company you really want to talk to, get yourself LinkedIn Premium for a month and you can send an, an InMail to anybody. <laughs> and so I've gotten some jobs that way. Uh, just because I was able to reach out directly, which is a great tool. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, with a lot of this stuff, it seems the amount of time you put into it pays off no matter what. It's just a matter of, are you gonna spread yourself too thin into like five different platforms or choose, these yeah. are the ones I wanna focus on and here's where I'm gonna do outreach and kind of like keep my portfolio up to date. Totally, except for uh, Fiverr and Upwork. Those ones <laughs> yeah. do not pay off. I mean, maybe, I've heard of one person maybe who, who made some money off of Fiverr. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't personally know anyone that uses those as their like consistent workflow. I know working not working can be pretty all right. I haven't heard of that. Uh, it's it's very much around like the creative field. So people who are like writers, editors, illustrators, designers, whatever it is, create a portfolio page like all the places. But then you can have up to six different pieces to show examples. Hmm. And then at the top of your page, there will be an option to say, available available soon and then put a date or oh, like cool. I'm busy but I'm also open to hearing things and people can go there and know like how free you are at any point. 
which mm-hmm. is kind of helpful. So it's also a platform made so like if you had a full time job working in house somewhere, you could also have that being like, I'm working full time, but I'm open to like some side jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, nice. Which is kind of nice because if you're just going to like Instagram. They have no idea going in. <laughs> I just got an Instagram <laughs> notification. Well, uh, I mean, uh, no, not Instagram, uh, LinkedIn. I was yeah. going to say. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, uh, but LinkedIn also has that sort of open to recruiters thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Which, for good and bad, I mean. Yeah, some recruiters are just, I mean, it's, it's hard to tell good and bad recruiters. Um, some opportunities are real, some are... Mm. Not <laughs> like I just got invited to um, an art show by a curator who's like, "Oh, I think your work would be such a great thing. You just have to get twenty of your friends to buy expensive oh, wait. tickets." Is this raw? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I might attend because they gave me free tickets to it's, like go see it. It's a weird experience. Like I think they're. I did it once, and I think it's yeah? like a. It's a, they mean well, but it depends on like what city it is and where they're doing it too. Cool. Well, I'd assume so, like Portland has a huge yeah, scene. Yeah, Portland for that. might be good. I did one in Boston and it was good. Nice. But I've heard of like smaller areas they just don't have enough of a system to kind of bring the people in. But mm-hmm. the whole selling ticket thing is super weird. Yeah, cuz then you have to pay the difference if yeah. you don't have 20 friends who want to buy expensive tickets. So <laughs> But yeah, if you attend and kind of just like no matter what, you'll be able to talk to people and meet people and Yeah, I mean that'll definitely be fun. I can't decide what color I want her nose to be. Maybe she like has a lot of sunscreen on it, like a tourist. <laughs> Maybe she'd be like all them tourists. I yeah. mean, that's like a New England tourist specifically too, <laughs> doing the whole like white strip <laughs> on the nose. Yeah. Leslie Irwin asks. I love Leslie. Well, she's here to ask you a question. <laughs> Where does the inspiration for your tiny party hat aesthetic come from? Ooh, well. Um, I mean, I think everybody looks good in a party hat. Uh, it's like the fashion staple that that everybody should own. Um, they're going to be totally in this season. But yeah, I think... Um, Do you have one to wear tomorrow? <laughs> I thought that might be a little much, but I bet I can make one. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I really have this fascination with parties that I kind of touched on. Um, I think... The idea, like, celebrating is just such a human thing to do. Like, we celebrate everything, every single achievement. Um, and if you don't, you should. <laughs> and if you don't, you should, yeah. I mean, but like, we, we like to commemorate things and uh, parties, like this sort of 50s uh, party, I guess, um, that's very nostalgic, is just the sort of representation that I've kind of picked. Because um, I don't think party hats are really a big thing anymore. They should be. Uh, but I mean, yeah. If you get into designer party hats, <laughs> I would love to be an online um, party supply hub. <laughs> Custom but they're party like, stuff. I'm doing a very specific party around like frogs, and you're like, I, will I got make you. you. I'll make a party hat a for frog frogs. party. <laughs> make you some uh, invitations. Make you a frog cake. Well, uh, make hire somebody to make you a frog cake. Um, so we're getting pretty close to uh, doing the other frames. How are we doing on time? Uh, we have about 50 minutes in total, but the last 10 minutes can be kind of winding down, so. Cool. Focus-wise, 40 minutes. Because then we're also going to have to look at the gallery work. Yeah, Come gallery to a decision work. On that. So yeah, there is about 35 minutes left to uh, nice. contribute a piece to the challenge today, which is drawing a mermaid of your own design um, using Kyle's mermaid brush pack, which if you go over in Behance, there's a link to the submission form, and we'll be drawing mermaids for the rest of the day, so you can draw with us, and then we'll take a look at everything in the gallery later on, and whoever Katya chooses will then get a year subscription of the Creative Cloud service. Wow. (laughs) That's worth a lot. I mean, that's what I live on. (laughs) (laughs) And food. Can I pick me? No. (laughs) (laughs) Mine's Um, the best. Uh, there we go. I'm just going to fill in a little bit. Um, should I do a white cup or a teal cup? Color decisions are always What fun. is she drinking? Just tea. It's a tea party, yeah, dude. Okay. Um, well, I mean, it could be different colors if it's getting fantastical. If your yeah, tea all right, is. all right, all right. Set the bar, the bar high for me. Uh, Why yeah. don't you? Gotta think of this fantasy realm. 
Fantasy Realms. We got more. We have six more. <gasps> wow, you guys are doing so good. All right. Um, yeah, I'm gonna start with one teacup. Um, <laughs> this fish. I love it. I love that hair color. I mean, that's what I'm using. There's a lot of really cool styles going on in here. Yeah. Oh, this is so fun to see you guys. Um. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, if anyone has more questions about whatever you have for Katya, definitely send them on in. And then when we wrap up at three, you can stick around and watch Daichi Ito. Yeah. We'll be drawing at three o'clock. His stuff looks super cool. I know. I haven't seen any of the work in progress, but all the work I've seen so far looks really awesome. So I'm excited to probably stick around and watch nice. some of it. Some little details here. Eyebrow texture. Eyebrow texture, eh. Eh. Eh? That's, eh. eh. <laughs> I mean, it's just part of the creative process is going eh in your head a lot. Unless you're just a wizard and everything that comes out of your pencil is Yeah, you just stick a thing perfection. on your temple and then it draws for you. That's not too far off. I got to fly a drone with my brain the other Oh, month. that's fun. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Had you flown a drone before? Or nope. This... Okay, so the first time was brain flight. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> that was cool. Where was it? Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to say. It was like part oh, of a study. Oh, okay. It so it's cool. not like your friend just happened to have... A brain drone. A though. brain drone. Okay. I mean, unless you have very connected friends. Yeah, I mean, I do. My friends are like my little brother has put stuff on the space station, so. Um, it's pretty sweet. Maybe he can connect me to some astronauts. <laughs> you can see astronaut <laughs> helmets from here. Oh yeah, is this gonna come up? Okay. Eventually. Sorry, we're talking about things that you can't yeah. see, but you might see. But we'll see. We'll see, Just okay. not today. Not today. Come back, this uh, teaser trailer. Yes, everyone has a brain drone. It's your Don't fantasy. lie to our public. Uh, Mel said it. Oh, all right, well, yeah, listen to or Mel. Or at least she has one, so unless you were hanging out with Mel. <laughs> and Voodoo has one. So what? There's a few Man, people everybody's with brain got drones. a brain drone but me? Yeah, what are you doing? Well, those are those, they're those friends that I want to connect with. <laughs> Shelly Rowe says, I'm sure this question was asked before, but what are some ways to market yourself as an artist, especially when your art might be done in what people might think a slightly unconventional way? Ooh, that's a good question and yeah, definitely wasn't asked before. Definitely a different question from the <laughs> typical promotion. Yeah, so I am a huge fan of not writing trends. You can get a lot of attention from doing things like fan art, um, these challenges, and... Um, you know, doing something that's super trendy, like drawing house plants and cute dogs, which I definitely do sometimes. But if your art is um, really unique and unconventional, that's all the better. That's really a strength. Um, and it, I think it also depends on like what kind of work you want. Cause if it's so unconventional, finding out where it fits best yeah, is probably the best way to reach out and start conversation as opposed to being like, I'll work for the New Yorker. You're like, well, that's not what this unconventional art fits. And just knowing who your audience is. Yeah, definitely. And uh, some really good advice that I got recently is um, you need to make it really clear to people what it is you do and what you want to do. So if you have a portfolio site, um, it's good to have like some variety on there, sure. But somebody's gonna hire you because they see what you do consistently. Mm -hmm. So like, if I want to do infographics but I have all this illustration and like poster design on there. Nobody's gonna hire me to do infographics even if I try to convince them with my words that, oh yeah, I can totally do that too. Like they have to, more and more I've found that people really have to see um, examples of the work that you wanna do. Yeah, not all of us have the kind of imagination you assume everyone has. Yeah, it's uh, talking to people who don't think visually <laughs> has been a, a learning curve, you know. Which is actually a really interesting kind of discussion point too of just when speaking to someone who does not 
dream with visuals too. Oh it's yeah. It's kind of interesting because like all my dreams are totally visual and I can foresee myself in different locations and everything. But the fact having spoken to people where it's just they see words and kind of feelings mm -hmm. or something, uh, which is also kind of how reading a book. I know when I read a book, I try to visualize the setting and the characters and everything. Um, but I'm sure there's many ways to do that. Yeah. What's your book reading like in that sense? Ooh, yeah, I definitely visualize a lot, um, but I am a huge fan of classic lit, I guess, so. Uh, Does it influence the partying? <laughs> Like Great Gatsby, is that a fair? Um, sure. Yeah, I actually really like um, that whole genre. Um, F. Scott Fitzgerald and mm -hmm. um, Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde. Oh, importance of being earnest. He's the best. So witty. Um, like that dry humor wit of that era too is fantastic. Yeah. Like um, how in Moby Dick he just is like, oh, my big insult was slapping a hat off someone. And you're like, oh, darn. <laughs> That's fighting words. Yeah, Moby Dick is, uh, <laughs> it took me a while to read, <laughs> but really solid. Um, what was the question? It was my reading style? Oh, this was just me kind of riffing off of it. Oh, okay, yeah. Like, I definitely imagine things. I mean, I also didn't know if any of the material you typically read kind of finds its way into your artwork and if it influences a lot or if they're too kind of disparate. Sure, yeah, no, I mean, I really like uh, art history, so classical themes worked into really silly uh, illustration like this, I, I, I find interesting. I, I'm all about inter uh, textuality. So when you, like, you know, art references art, references literature, references old music, mm -hmm. I think that's really exciting and it's fun to sort of, even if you're doing something silly and trivial like drawing mermaids, <laughs> it's really fun to, you know, reference um, something that's come before you. So like I, <laughs> when I heard I was doing mermaids, I'm like, okay, well, what are the classical mermaids? And there's this one fantastic painting um, about the sirens like kind of clamor clamoring onto um, Odysseus's ship. But I mean, they were just women. They weren't even exactly mermaids <laughs> and they weren't the bird sirens either. So it was a great painting though. Like they had <laughs> legs and everything? Yeah, they had legs. Huh. They're just like, help, my boat sank. <laughs> Yep, come, <laughs> come party. <laughs> come uh, party to your death. Yes, let's see. I think I'm gonna put... Also, uh, Shelly Rowe, the one who asked about having a very unconventional style said, I also draw people as birds. So okay. now we know the context <laughs> of the unconventional style. Um, like, nice, I'd love to know more, that yeah. sounds cool. Um, but yeah, back to, I guess, that, hashtags? It took me a long time to learn about hashtags, but they're really useful. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Just gotta adapt to the modern age and kind of roll with it. Yeah, I mean, I think they were originally called the Octothorpe. I'm pretty sure that's what that symbol is actually called, but we call it a hashtag because it is As opposed is to the OG hashy. tic tac toe. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see, I think. Leslie Irwin also asked Have you ever designed a book cover? A book cover? Um. I'm trying to think. I took a picture of lava that turned into a chiropractic book cover. I don't think- Like sort of by accident? <laughs> They're just like, hey, I want that for yeah, my Yeah, so that's not designed though at all. Um, I mean, I guess that's the whole visual learning thing too, is like, if you don't know what you want, but you just know you need a book cover, did yeah. they just scrounge the internet and go like, yeah, this one would work all right? Yeah. Interesting. Um, uh, I think, I might have, <laughs> my memory's uh, not working right now, so maybe. But book covers are, um, I would love to get more into that um, as I do more illustration, because I love telling a story in a little snapshot, and when you have a whole book's worth of context to kind of communicate, like that's a huge bottleneck of information, but an exciting project, so. Totally. With that, is there like a book you would specifically want to do the cover for? Ooh, um. Definitely not romance, because I would not know where to begin. Um, I think anything that involves a lot of like, like a rich world building type thing um, would be a lot of fun, something imaginative. Um, I mean, I know you mentioned like children book kind of thing yeah. before. Yeah, for like young adult fiction would be really fun. Um, so right now I'm, I'm actually working on the first, or I guess second frame, so I've put the, original drawing at um, 
50% behind here, so that's separate. And I erased her hair um, so that I can sort of compress this, this coil. Um, so I'm gonna have her kind of going up and down and expanding and um, just kind of hovering in place. So I'm gonna try and see if I can animate that. So she's got kind of this long coil. Maybe that's why people have long coiling hair is because the animation just looks cooler than <laughs> if it was shorter. Uh, what do you mean? That's why- Like when mermaids have really long hair and you animate them in the water, it's gonna look more interesting and oh, like definitely. seaweed than if it was just shorter shaved. Yeah, I think that's true. I think, so yeah, um, as I'm thinking about the future animation, I want all of the different components to be the same number of frames so that when I put them all together, they're not out of sync. So I think I'm gonna try and give her six frames. So I'll need to draw five because the last frame will essentially be the first frame. It'll make sense later, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Again, seeing is believing. Yeah. And helps tell information way easier. Yeah. The uh, Bruno De Paula asks, what iPad are you using? Um, this is a nice big iPad Pro. Um, I think it's 13 inches. Does that look like 13 inches? I think this might actually be the bigger one. What's the biggest one? Because I think the one, one I have is the 13 inch. It's the biggest oh, one that I could get. <laughs> so Maybe that, that is the 13. I think 13 is the yeah, biggest. Yeah, yeah, that's the 13. But I yeah, wish it was bigger. It definitely changed my life. It was a very good investment. Did you ever think me. about getting the smaller one or were you just like all in on the bigger one? Um, I mean, it depended on what I could afford at the time. Um, but it was really worth it for me to get the bigger one. Uh, because I was working on a kind of an old junkie Cintiq, which was nice. It was a step up from um, just drawing on a Wacom tablet and looking at the screen. Mm -hmm. So and being able to draw on the it Cintiq. It makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. Um, uh, you don't need as much hand-eye coordination as you do for like a bamboo tablet. Um, but like having to draw, did you do a lot of like drawing drawing when you had the bamboo tablet? Or yeah. was it more like? Yeah, yeah I did um, a lot of digital painting. Like the painting I could figure out, but the drawing part, I was like, forget this. I'll just like draw it <laughs> elsewhere and scan it. Yeah, I mean, I did a lot of that too. But um, yeah, I got this because I wanted it to be portable uh, so I can go work, work in coffee shops and whatnot. Um, so yeah, uh, iPad Pro, Apple Pencil um, is my typical setup. And then I'll show you how I send it to the desktop version of Photoshop. Sketch goes seamlessly into Photoshop. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. And then you can just, you have all your layers still as your layers. Um, if you name them, I'm pretty sure the names come through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really good about exporting. And if you just finished what you're doing here, you can just like send something straight to Behance, which is pretty nice. Or accidentally send it. Or accidentally. Like, oh, no. <laughs> um, it's too easy. Yeah. Also to answer that, Nick, um, we are doing it all in Sketch and then taking it right into Photoshop, so no use or no need for draw. Draw is totally useful, just not for this specifically. Yep. Um, also, Voodoo, thanks for posting uh, all the links to different spaces in which people can follow Katya. Oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I hope I've updated yeah, all I was going to ask at the end, but this also makes it way easier. There is nice. uh, your own personal site, Behance, and on Instagram. Yeah, I just started uh, trying to pay attention to Instagram a little bit more. <laughs> So I don't have a ton on there yet, but yeah, thanks for checking me out, guys. Um, I mean, it's I, definitely gotten better, I think. Like Instagram's general art community and like- Oh yeah. Making sure to share things with each other. It used to just be like photos. Mm -hmm. But now there's but. all sorts of stuff. And you can, uh, I'll show you how to export the video at the very end of all of this. So that's an MP4, mm -hmm. not a .mov, because there's certain requirements you need if you want to post on Instagram. Like it has to be four seconds long. Um, at least, uh, which can be problematic if you're doing a really short loop. Um, so I'll show you how to make that longer and uh, and how to get it into the right format so you can just airdrop it right to your phone from your computer and then you're set. Um, awesome. It's something I had to kind of research <laughs> and learn. <laughs> yeah, um, it's like, I know I continue to use all the different YouTube videos and like message boards and stuff to try to get answers for stuff so it doesn't stop no matter how skilled or experience you have. Yeah, I and think it's there's always, always going to be research, yeah. Yeah, stuff's changing so fast. Yep. Also in referring to uh, Reverb Mike was kind of talking about preferring to draw on actual paper compared to this, but 
there are uh, matte kind of covers you can get yeah. for your iPad that kind of replicate a paper texture and have a little bit of a tooth. So if you do kind of want to try that out when you're going Squishy, digitally. Scratchy. Yeah, Friction. I know the Cintiq has a bit more tooth than the iPad does. Did you get that sense when you were on like the Cintiq? Um, yeah, the Cintiq definitely isn't this like super glossy glass screen. But um, yeah, for the first my first time drawing on the iPad, I thought I was going to scratch this thing up real bad, but it is not um, shown any wear and tear at all. And I really grew to love the uh, glass texture, actually. Mm -hmm. um, your hand slides really well across it, um, and you don't get those uh, uh, charcoal smudges, you know? Um, bane of my existence in art school. <laughs> when you like go to do a detail later and are like, oh, like, wait, where'd oh, this I come from? No! I <laughs> smashed everything. Yep. Um, we have only a few more minutes for right. people to contribute to the challenge. So today we're doing mermaids, and if you have some last minute drawing you want to do, or if there's a drawing you're working on, make sure to submit it in the Behance challenge submission. We have a lot now. Nice. I think there's guys. even like six more from when we last <laughs> looked or something. I like these. Pretty good. Ooh. I think they use the same brush for the yeah, yeah. scalies. Ooh, there's some nice angles, nice poses. It's nice like hair. Wonder Woman y kind of Amazonian. Mm -hmm. Let's keep talking about things they can't see. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, they can go there. That's true, that's true. They just can't see mine. Yeah. Um, you don't know which ones we're talking about. Uh, but maybe you could put it together. I think we're really <laughs> smart. Tima Aflutunov. Mm hmm. Mm hmm asks, where does Katya's cool name come from? I gave it to myself. <laughs> no, um, it's Russian. It's a um, pretty common Russian nickname. The full name is Yekaterina. Uh, if you read um, like Anna Karenina, there's some characters named Katya, I'm pretty sure. Um, mm -hmm. I've never seen Archer, but I think there's like a Russian I think robot. So. I don't know, that's the only, when, when I meet people, they always go, oh, wow. I either have a friend named Katya, oh, oh do you watch Archer? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's Russian. It comes from Russia <laughs> and my parents. Does it mean anything or is it? Um, well, the English version is Catherine, which I think means pure unto thine self. Okay, and okay. I'm trying, so. Yeah, that's a pretty good thing. To, <laughs> it's not like the shoemaker. <laughs> uh, which can be respectable, too. We all wear shoes. Yeah. Um, Someone's got to do it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep, yeah, that's where it comes from. Very cool. But I was born here, so I'm not. <laughs> Just Still really counts. good at ESL. Um, yep. Hello, Renee. I know you. Hi, Renee. I, I don't. Thanks for swinging in. She says you're killing it, in any case. Thanks. With a smile face, so not like you're not actually killing it. <laughs> All right. Positive killing There's it. so much slang nowadays I know. that the I can't English keep language. up with. Yeah. It's a nightmare and delightful, as long as you were there in the beginning. <laughs> Shelly Rowe asks, when using your iPad, does your hand accidentally create lines you don't want it to? Ooh, sometimes uh, it doesn't create lines, but like if I set my hand down, it might make like a little dot. But usually I just go through it towards the end and erase everything out. Um, I know that would be a problem in uh, the Cintiq experience too, yeah. when drawing in Photoshop. But I always like had my hand like... on like the undo. Uh -huh. So I'd be like, oh, do do, do do. Yep. Um, with this, it's really nice. You can just like swipe back and forth to undo or mm -hmm. redo. Um, but uh, yeah, for the most part, the iPad's really good about sensing when it's your the side of your hand versus um, your pen or your yeah. finger. Like you can draw with your finger too, for sure. Um, I know some people use the kind of white glove or yeah. thing to kind of put another level of blockade on that too. Yeah, I yeah, haven't yeah. personally, but oh yeah, I think this might be one right here. You might have. That. Oh, oh and now you gotta figure out what layer now it is. Now I gotta figure out what layer it is. Oh, definitely not that one. <laughs> um, hair layer, that's the one. Um, yeah, in a, in a context that's not this, like if you're doing a Photoshop file, how do you typically organize or name convention your layers? Your layers, that's a good uh, question. Yeah, normally, like if it's a design project, uh, I might do folders and maybe name the folders. Uh, but really, animation is the only one, only case in which I actually do name them because there's just so many different frames. You have to mm -hmm. know which one's um, first. So sometimes I'll do like, in this case, like mermaid one, 
uh, A, B, C, D, so that I know it goes A, B, C, D, because when you put it in the uh, timeline, then it uh, gets a little bit tricky, and especially if you have to go back and edit things, mm -hmm. you, uh, it, you, you're gonna do yourself a favor by naming things. It's kind of a pain as you go along, but worth it for this. Yeah, it's, it's also like one of those huge a for yourself, and also if you ever had to hand the file off to someone, Ooh, yeah. the Working nightmare that is trying to figure out what order things should be in, or like Ugh. why you made decisions, and yeah, if for all you designers, if you um, ever have gotten handed somebody else's file, everybody sets their stuff up so differently. It's a it, often a, a trial to uh, <laughs> unravel. Yeah, it's kind of awesome to see as not someone who has to collaborate with them how the whole naming convention might differ completely. Mm -hmm. I've I've certainly gotten comic drawings from people if I'm gonna like color it or do final touch-ups and just been completely confused as to how <laughs> they did the structure, but I think a lot of my structure comes from a UX and UI kind of background where I get very methodical knowing it's gonna be handed off to someone. Mm -hmm. So the good things that come out of very methodical design experience. Yeah, but I mean like in the, with file naming, I'm super guilty of just going final one, final two, final Most V7. Final. <laughs> yeah, or just ASDGF1, you know, if I'm really over it. <laughs> Cuz is that the same for like your files in your computer if you're like Oh yeah, yeah that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like if I'm working on different design iterations and it's not a deliverable then mm -hmm. uh, I'll I'll build myself a, uh, um, a labyrinth <laughs> if I ever need to, to trick go back. yourself. Yep. But it's good, it's good to be organized. I am a proponent of that. Frouty crooner finger draws. Oh, on the iPad? Yeah. I, I mean, nice. it seems like it. Is that right? Also, yes, you could have a cool white glove, which also means you could have drawing duels. So Draw you could, like take it off and do the slap. Oh, like duels. Someone. Oh, you said duels. I thought yeah, you said yeah. tools. Like, yeah, it's a tool. Oh, yeah. I mean, kind Drawing of. Drawing duels. <laughs> yeah. Hard I to challenge do. you. <laughs> we, uh, there's, have you been part of any sort of like drawing competition duel scenarios? I've never dueled somebody for drawing, yeah. no. Do you want to go? Or do you want to take us outside? I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe the last day. Do you guys know that he's a baller um, illustrator too? Really good stuff. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, you've done some of these before. Yeah, I did one as the artist, then one as hosting. So this is the second hosting, but yeah, doing a duel would be <laughs> kind of goofy. There was one that- uh, Adobe Live? Creative, I mean, that'd be fun. <laughs> but you're just like grilling at each other the whole time. But if you, like theme-based, if it's just mermaid and then you have to kind of do your own mermaid. And everybody votes at the end, that'd be kind of yeah. fun. You guys yeah, can... the, uh, there was one that Creative South, which is a conference that I totally recommend everyone go to out in Georgia, uh, that is a really awesome design community, but they had one that's type fight, and so they have a wrestling ring in the middle of the conference what? floor. And so they would say like, you and you both get the letter A, and then you have whatever it is, 10 minutes, I think, to like draw that letter. And then they have judges kind of choose like which letter that wins. Huh. But you get to hang out in a wrestling ring, which is wow. pretty sweet. And then you're sitting across from them and you can like, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. That's cool. I thought you were totally crazy asking me if this was a thing, but no, it is I mean, a thing. It's not a huge thing, but it's a thing that would be fun, especially with the internet now, because you have so much. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, those sites like Draw Something, right? Those are like online games. Yeah. Um, where you're supposed, you've got like a really strict time limit. Like there's a Jackbox, if you've ever played that game, where you kind of do like a, they're all drawing based games like Pictionary. Oh, cool. But. That sounds like fun. Um, Seth Campbell, I'm working on an old Intuos 3 with a cotton glove for sliding. <laughs> That's <laughs> Everyone awesome. Everyone here at work laughs at me. <laughs> no, you do you. You make that beautiful Those art. Those laughs are saying rock on. Yep. Yep, they are. Fruity Crooner, follow up. I used to use these little pencils and crayons set at Walmart, but they end up breaking, so I got to keep more sustainable nibs. <laughs> oh. I mean, I actually don't. I must have bought some art supplies from Walmart a long time ago, but like not for, I haven't even been in a Walmart in like okay. eight years. Yeah, I really like Blick. <laughs> that's Blick's pretty good. That's my go-to. There's unfortunately one pretty close to where I live, 
and I have to walk by it, and I usually end up buying something. Yep, I mean, it's a trap, because you're just like, trap. wow, magical wonderland. <laughs> yep. Are there any sort of like art supply things that you work on outside of this digital realm of your career that help to influence what you're doing here? Yeah, I mean, I did like oil painting, which really, really helped me learn about, um, I guess, color theory and um, patience <laughs> uh, and still lifes and fruits. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, I think it's really worth it to do the hard work of like figure studies classes um, and um, still lifes, which it, it sucks kind of to work on drawing a pomegranate next to a weird eye uh, statue <laughs> thing for like three weeks, but it, it really teaches you a lot. Um, totally. So yeah, uh, oil painting, I did stuff in the wood shop and ceramics. Um, and from each of those, you learn about different things. Like ceramics still really influences me because it, it's all about these um, sort of sleek forms um, that you can achieve and uh, the glaze work is really fun. Uh, yeah, but mostly it's just sketching. Like I've got a, a dot pad that I, oh shoot, ha ha ha, green screen, green dot pad. Yep, um, <laughs> there's nothing there. <laughs> um, it's fake, <laughs> it's not actually there. Um, but I've got a dot pad that I do sketches in um, pretty much before any drawing. Like I was drawing some uh, reverse mermaids on the plane ride over and I swear <laughs> the lady next to me averted eye contact the whole way. <laughs> um, out of just pure embarrassment? Out of like, what is this girl doing? Drawing a fish with Because I feel like the other side is them just being like, wow, you can draw. No. This mm, is awesome. That's not the side eye oh, okay. that she the was side giving you me. So there's there's oh, different man. kinds of side eyes. <laughs> that was not the one. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, the whole, the idea of like sculpting and stuff and bringing that back into 2D art, mm -hmm. uh, I think is a really awesome thing to kind of have access to. Yeah, and often we draw like, you know, people are 3D objects, so uh, having an understanding of that form will help you to do things like shading and color bouncing and um, just basic drawing. Totally. Um, yeah. So, so where are we at here? So I think, um, yeah, so this is just the first frame, and it's kind of hard to see it, uh, but I just kind of compressed the coil of her, uh, her hair and her tail, so she's gonna kind of be going like this. And I'm not moving her up and down here because that's something you can actually do later with oh. the video timeline. Sneak so preview. See, there's really animation tips coming at all angles because with the video timeline, I can just animate my mermaid girl kind of in place going like this with her hair. And with the video timeline, I can then move her up and down in accordance. Um, so we'll see how that so works out. So many nifty tricks. Yeah. Um, and there's so many different ways to do animation in Photoshop. Like I know people will sometimes use the um, puppet warp tool to just get one drawing and then kind of create different frames and move things mm -hmm. around with a mesh. Um, you can just draw directly in the video uh, timeline, I think. Mm -hmm. But I prefer sort of the old school draw each frame by hand way. So that's what I'm showing. But yeah, there's a lot of shortcuts or... now available, but. I know. After Effects has like a ton of plugins. And oh then, yeah. <laughs> like even Photoshop now has different plugins. Yeah, and I have a, a lot of respect for people who um, can use all those plugins, but I was kind of stuck to uh, the mainstream tools we've got. <laughs> we've so. got a lot of pieces to pick from. Wow, guys! Oh shoot, you're gonna make this so hard for me. I know. Do you want to look them over and? Do the choice kind of in the 2.45 realm, or do you want to? Yeah, what time is it now? 2.39. Ooh, five minutes, guys. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, six minutes. I can do math. Okay. Um, yeah, so if you guys have any last minute submissions, please get them in. I'm so excited. Um, so many mermaids. So many mermaids. Start an army or a, What's it called? Um, Which what? When a bunch of people go out into a public place. Oh, flash mob. We could do a mermaid oh, flash mob. A riot? <laughs> <laughs> mermaid riot. <laughs> King Triton is a tyrant. Yeah, he's just like, go my fish people, go mess up the city. I'll just be here. <laughs> um, yep. So for the sake of um, time, I think I might do one more 
or a couple more frames with this girl tonight so that I can start showing you guys a toe merm tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then definitely by day three, we'll get a background going and put them all together and uh, see mm -hmm. how that party goes. And to uh, answer Mandy Chen, you can, you can submit whenever. It's just right now, we're not gonna be able to put you into our choice, but the next group that's coming in, we'll absolutely be able to look at your artwork and then you'd still have a chance to win. Nice. Yeah. And again, coming up next at three o'clock is gonna be Daichi Ito. He'll be working on some really cool stuff, day one. Don't know what he's gonna be working on though. Stay tuned and find out. I know, right? I'm right there with everyone. I have to stay tuned to find out too. <laughs> Really like this Merc, this Merc Queen. Nice. It's a lot of good ones. Uh, all right, can I can I start looking at those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just I want mean, to see you guys. We might stuff. need some time to review too because yeah. we're getting down there. All right, we'll start down here, I believe. Nice. I'll just cycle all the way back up to the newest ones. Ooh, oh, I like this, uh, it's like a double silhouette with a face, and then the hair is turning Whoa. to the back of the head. I'm not used to uh, the taps. Oh, gotcha. I usually have to click. <laughs> nice. Some nice, like, seaweed leafiness mm -hmm, going on. Mm -hmm. And that could be a mermaid brush in the background. Awesome, I like yeah, that. lots of really cool textures there. Nice. <laughs> I love this adventure crew. Really fun character designs, wow. <laughs> Nice line work. Oh, the guy with a harpoon arm. Just jabbed it into his nub. <laughs> Ooh. Nice. Looks like um, a yeah, mermaid what? with like armor or something. Yeah. Like lobster, purple lobster mermaid. Like almost like a suit of armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. And then some, I think, I think those are the bubble brushes from Mermaid. Yeah, thank you everyone for submitting. These are awesome. Nice, oh, that's so cute. Oh, tiny party hat. <laughs> nice. The crab. Oh, the crab is so super cute. Awesome. She's smiling, but inside she's like, I wish I had a tiny party hat. <laughs> super cute. I it would like be the... even a tinier tiny party hat <laughs> if she were to be wearing it. Yeah, um, I like the uh, breaking up the sort of the little blurb of a background with a fish mm -hmm. um, swimming over it. Nice touch. Awesome. Good job, Emily. And the scale brushes, too. And then Wow, that's Saha. so expressive. What a cool dynamic pose. Yeah, the line work really works here, I think. Yeah, and putting the texture over yeah. it. Yeah. It's very painterly, but without using a typical painterly brush. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Brad. It's a nice green, nice too. Nice moody colors, yeah. Nikki. Nice. I love those colors so much. <laughs> that hair. <laughs> it's like well, the most colorful pattern fish of all. Yeah, that would be such a cute like shirt design. Totally. Bold and graphic. This is actually kind of magazine editorial-ish yeah. in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, another Studio dynamic Cadiz. pose. Lots of energy here. Yeah, I like the little spatulate fingers. It's very um, uh, amphibious, I guess, <laughs> which makes sense for a mermaid, totally. Awesome. So it reminds me of like a Zora from Zelda. You ever seen Zelda stuff? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of Zora ish. Yeah, oh, cute. Tiny Nora. party hat. You guys know how to pander. But they all got party oh, hats. Oh, they all have party hats. <laughs> awesome. Super cute. I like the uh, purples. Ooh, this is very Christine? like traditional, huh? Oh, just the name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very uh, sort of like traditional painting composition. It's got like that flair of drama and the where you're looking. It's the old uh, Sistine Chapel kind of. <laughs> Reaching out, it. sure. Desambaka. Ooh, that tells a story. There's like a shadow on the wall. She does not seem happy with that shadow. <laughs> nice pose. A pool, maybe? Oh, it could be at a pool, yeah. Margarita. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys heard me about the party hat thing. <laughs> um, it's like they're listening. Nice. I like cactuses. 
Kek kek kind of bashful. Inside. Yeah. Ooh, bubbles. Julia's. <laughs> nice. I like that haircut. <laughs> nice purple matching. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. She must have spent a lot of time finding stars to match Maybe her because hair. Because she's going to a party. <laughs> Jackie's. Ooh. That would be something so fun to see animated. It's totally. just like she's winding up for an action. Bold and graphic. Oh, it reminds me a lot of the uh, sort of Incredibles, that that um, totally. that style of concept art. Or like uh, all the angular things that Hercules had. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, 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 yeah. She looks like she belongs in a vase. Totally. <laughs> Party. Yeah. Nice. That's so fun. They're all interacting with the typography. It's like lighting here, too, is very ocean right back here. Yeah. Samurai Jack style, totally, for that last one. Or the nice. second to last. Uh -huh. However, it bounced back out. So then we also have this oh, one. Oh, that's cute. By <laughs> I love reverse mermaids. Ah. Nice. A little wave. Nice to, <laughs> nice touch putting it in, in a fishbowl, too, so you've got that sort of framing. Sailor tattoo. Oh, yeah, nice. I didn't <laughs> see that. I love that the eyes are teal. Ooh, wow, Ryan's. that's a lot going on. Yeah, this is like a full three-page spread or something. Whoa, I see some party hats. Yep. Is that a cat? It's a cat? Oh, back there? Yeah, yeah. it's a catfish. Because it's got like oh, a it's little a catfish. hook tail going. You're so right. And like a, I love the, the nose design that comes back up over the head. Oh man, you guys, these are also rad. Are there Maybe it looks like a kraken. Ooh. I want to blow that up and put it on a mural on my wall. These colors are really nice. Yeah. I, I'm so fond of um, line work that blends right back into the, you know, the, the base color, the background. Totally. And that one little eye there, um, super nice composition. This is a really strong composition. And I love that it's a, sort of like the uh, shrimp body tail instead of scales. Yeah, yeah, or like a nautilus shell. Yeah, but there's also like different tails going on. Did you do that just now? Wow. <laughs> nice. That's a lot of blue. Oh, so and definitely much some. Texture. Oh, yeah, I think a lot this of is the reference one because you get this. I saw it in there. That oh, okay. <laughs> maybe accidentally. <laughs> That's yeah, definitely uh, using a lot of uh, Kyle T. Webster brushes. So many. <laughs> Use all of them. Whoa. <laughs> Ooh, this person definitely looks like they've been like underwater, maybe deep sea. Much darker side. Yeah, cool fingers. Little shape of waterish. <laughs> I never saw that. I I've, I meant to. Oh, nice. Logan Chase. Definitely a little bit more realistic. Mm -hmm. um, nice to see a merman. Some Super texture. soft colors. Yeah, <laughs> I love the purple skin with the green hair. <laughs> camouflage, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Oceanic camouflage. Maybe he wants to stand out. Mer queen of everything. <laughs> Wait, go back. <laughs> nice. By Josephine. Bold and graphic. Another yeah. one that would be awesome, like on a mug or poster or something. It's got a really nice, kind of like simplistic style. Yeah, I love that her hair is so big. And great typography, too. Does a crown count as a party hat? If I you're think always so. the birthday boy? <laughs> yeah. If you're always the queen, then the <laughs> crown is your party hat. Because wouldn't that be so sad if queens could never wear party hats because they're always wearing a crown? But could you put the party hat like in, in between inside the crown? Yeah, if you want to look like a goober queen. Or every point is a party hat. <laughs> all right. Ultra party all hat. All right, yep, yep. All right, so that's all of them. Ooh. I have to do the hard choice thing. Shoot. Really? Do I just pick right now? Yeah. You have to choose one, and then this one's going to be the creative cloud holder so they can keep making one. What if we run out of time before I pick? I know you got That might be a tactic that I, I know. employ. <laughs> Alright, scroll down and up again. Okay. Mm -hmm, I'm so mm -hmm. fond of so many of these. Alright, keep going up. Um, I'm not just staring to the distance, guys. There's a <laughs> screen yeah. over here. <laughs> um shoot. Can you go down again? <laughs> um Uh, is there like suspenseful music playing in the background? Because 
or a drum Hopefully. rolling like somewhere. Boom. Or the. Mm -hmm. Um, do I just do I just say I think I know which one I, I like the best? I mean, you can like. Yeah, I, I think. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 All right. Awesome. So I like this one a whole lot. The winner is Emily Mendoza. <laughs> it's a really cute use of the Kyle T. Webster brushes. Um, it's a really cute use of the uh, brushes, Brush and uh, the nose is super cute and how she's. I, I really like that pose, sort of reclining. Um, but yeah, composition. Oh, no. Did what? I miss this one? Do we miss this one? Oh, that's super rad. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I, this one was down at the bottom. It was the first one. Oh, first one. Way to get it in. Um, I love that third eye thing. Oh man, you combined uh, <laughs> a lot here. It's this a nice mermaid has work. it going on. Nice. Thank you so much for sharing. I really like the hair in this one too. Mm -hmm. Amazing drawing of hands too. Hands that are foreshortened like that. I still find it still, tricky. But yeah, I, I still am super fond of that one. Um, use of brushes, composition, really cute character design. Um, and adorable, it's just the adorable factor is pretty high. <laughs> Congratulations. Awesome. Thanks, Emily. Yeah, thanks oh, Emily. everyone for she submitting some, some really awesome work. Questions, where? Oh no, I, I just, oh. didn't she pop up in the chat before? I believe so, yeah. Cool. I thought she was having another question. Plus oh, there is no. another question. Because <laughs> we do have a few more minutes. Oh yeah, if you have more questions. My question to you is how good do you feel about winning? <laughs> <laughs> um, is there any like last things to note about this before we wrap up or like what people should expect for tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. Um, so in case anybody tuned in late, um, this is sort of my super rough base sketch. Um, can they see it? <laughs> no, um, they can. no, they can. This is my super rough base sketch. So I'm doing sort of two animation uh, frame projects. So I'm going to draw normal mermaid and leggy mermaid, and I'm going to make different frames for both of them, two different GIFs, and combine them in a final composite animation. So tune in again to see the next step in that process. Is next step. Fish leg? Next step is fish leg. Okay. And, um, yep. He gets a party hat. Or she, I guess? Whatever. She. I, I mean, think it's very gender neutral nice as a fish goes. <laughs> um, yep. And there's going to be brainstorm, uh, please, some snacks that mermaids would eat because I can't think of any. Maybe crab cakes? Seaweed? Seaweed? <laughs> but that's like what you swim around in all day. Right? You wouldn't want to eat grass, although I don't know. Well, we eat a lot of stuff on land, and then we <laughs> well, also go to the ocean. And Whole Foods sells grass, so who am I to talk? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what does anyone think that mermaids eat? Tune in next time for the big reveal. <laughs> because there's actually an answer. Uh, yeah, Barbecue like I said, ribs. I know everything. <laughs> well, I am drawing mermaids having a tea party, and in case nobody realized what would happen to tea underwater. <laughs> you, you don't have to follow the lines of logic here um, as we draw mermaids and reverse merms. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, you guys. This has been really exciting. Yeah. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And for day one, day two, we'll have, I think you also said there's going to be a little bit of animation you do for today to have for tomorrow. Yeah, I'll mermaid. probably, I mean, it might not be super fun to watch me draw the same thing over and over. So I might do a few more frames. Um, tonight of of Mermaid 1 so that I can start working on Mermaid 2 tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you'll definitely see me drawing That's exciting. all those frames. And yeah, up next at 3 o'clock is Daichi Ito doing some awesome illustration work for us. Yeah, very different, very awesome. Yep, there's a lot of diversity today, so stick around and see all of the new awesome drawings. <laughs>